Good morning! Hello everybody, how are we doing today? I'm doing alright, I have a new cup of tea. I'm awake and I'm ready to get going. Hello Anya, how are you doing? I'm having a bit I'm having a quick clean of my glasses before we begin. <laughs> so give me a second and I'll be able to read things because uh, I'm wondering if I should add glasses to my V2 model. Just because I, I when I when I have to mess with my glasses IRL, uh, it, it's usually a big deal because if I take them off, I can't see. <laughs> and sometimes it just confuses people when they're like, "But you, but you don't, you don't wear glasses." <laughs> so I'm like, maybe I need to put them on. I do want to upgrade uh, the laugh animation and some of the expressions a little bit. I feel like they could be a bit more expressive. I think that's what my old model had over this one. Aha, glasses are back on my face. There we go. <gasps> You're home! Yes, oh my gosh, how was your trip? Very sleepy. Apparently he was babbling nonsense last night when you were sleeping and nodding up. Oh. <laughs> my partner does that a lot. I do it apparently occasionally, but he certainly seems to do it more than I do. <laughs> so long, maybe he slept um, four hours on your plate. It did sound like, in the very brief comment, it sounded long. Because, I mean, it's going to sound long. I have absolutely no way of knowing because, full disclosure, I've never been on a plane. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know how long planes are supposed to last at the best of times, but it sounded long. <laughs> I was like, this just sounds like a bit of an epic journey. I'm going to have a swig of tea. Num num num. Okay, I have tea, I've cleaned my glasses, all these things that I should have done before I press stream. <laughs> I am ready now. I've also had a little fiddle with the sound settings because I've noticed on my VODs that everything is quite quiet after, um, after it's been recorded, so I'm hoping this is all good now. Well, this is better. The ducking seemed to be at a good level when I tested it, and I feel like the mic is constantly at a good volume. But if there's any sound issues, uh, let me know and I'll look into it. Left your parents at around noon on Monday. Flight to DC. Three hour layover. Flight from DC at 7pm, 1am CET. Got to Paris around 8 a.m. Oh my gosh, that's long. Though I don't know, is it is that like a normal thing? <laughs> How long does it usually take to fly from DC to Paris? Layover to the... It's the layovers that seem like they're adding all the time. Got home by 3 p.m. yesterday. Oh my gosh. But to be traveling from Monday to Tuesday is crazy which makes sense because time zones but oh the layovers are killed yeah that i was like this is what sounds like it's the problem but you need it in paris cdg is a miserable airport even if you're ending in paris oh <laughs> that's something to bear in mind i feel like my first trip abroad is probably not going to be by plane out of design but then and then there'll be some places i want to go to that that's inevitable i genuinely hate it <laughs> not looking forward to it it's not something that really um inspires me to 
to go traveling, but I do I do want to just because it seems so interesting. Okay. So I am drawing a couple more portraits today. And I am going to be doing more NPCs for my play-by-post game. And we have these two gentlemen to draw today that are who are identical twins. So I guess we're drawing one and flipping it. <laughs> I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make a slight difference in the expression just so it isn't just that that cheeky. But these are my twins. They are Hio and Sue. And we're gonna... They are bodyguards. They are bodyguards to, um... To one of the noble characters in the game. And I love them because they're mischievous twins. <laughs> Enough said. They have red hair as an homage to the twins in Oren High School host club. And it's, you know... Let's just say a lot has been borrowed from Oren. <laughs> Oren was a was a thing at a time. And I I kinda like doing that, you know. Like, especially when I know the group I'm playing a game for hasn't watched a lot of like girly romance anime. <laughs> I kind of like inspiring the npcs on it that like like if it's an anime that people haven't haven't seen i'm like do you know what this group hasn't seen any washa i'm gonna i'm gonna go base a character off of shishomaru <laughs> stuff like that it just something that's really silly that entertains me a little bit but it's also nice to have like a base because I find it, you know, after you RP a little bit of the NPC, they become their own person. But especially at the start, if especially if they're not like a hugely important NPC, like a like a bodyguard, it's quite nice to have uh, like a starting place. I find um, the twins are also very interesting to RP for me in a way. Uh, one of the one of the characters likes to talk to them. The other, uh, it's like a two person party. The other person's can take or leave them, but that's 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 neither here or there. The interesting part about them is that they don't speak the local language <laughs> because the um, the prince who they they defend is is not from is not from the local area. He speaks the local language. They do not. <laughs> so they have had some very interesting ways of of communicating and getting getting their mischievousness across it's i find a little bit easier in a play by post game because i can it's all kind of written descriptions anyway so it's less jarring with a character I would say that it's not that they're not speaking, but you know, sometimes if you're playing a game and a character is not speaking, language barriers can be very hard to RP, in my experience. But this one's been this one's been okay, and I think in play by post stuff, it might be uh, a bit easier to do because you can have details of the hand gestures. Heck, you can even just post images. Or gifts being like they do, you know, they they they, they do this. <laughs> they wave their hands around. But yeah, is that something that people have done a lot of? Have people had a lot of language barriers in their tabletop games, or how how do people get around that? if they do because it's something i always find very interesting when you have a a game that's kind of on a like a global basis cuz i feel like it's 
it's quite f fun. It's almost important as well if it's a global basis, like the assumption that you can't just talk to to everyone. But you know, if you're in your if you if, if you've got the home field advantage, probably. But the idea that if you kind of go to a new place, that uh, you're gonna have to learn a new language or learn some customs and stuff. I find that very fun. The one time I've played in German, your first stream game. Oh, that's cool. The DM would send you translation of words you didn't know in a private message. That's cool. So that's like actual real life language barriers, which has got to be infinitely harder. <laughs> But that's very sweet. Just the the having that's a quite good on the GM's part to be sending you like DMs, so it's not like a like a big thing. That sounds cool. <laughs> yep. I admit, didn't know it was going to be streamed until the day of. Oh, <laughs> fair. Otherwise, that was that would that would be bold. I mean, it was still pretty, pretty bold. But yeah, that's a. I mean, trial by fire when it comes to languages, for sure. Let's move those down a bit. Those are too high. There we go. Absolutely. <laughs> I was a newbie in the tabletop RPG scene then. It was it was October 2020. Ah, prime prime tabletop RPG booming scene. I think. I feel like that's when I really started to get to know a lot of people in the European community because we were all we were all at home. <laughs> We're all at home, found our way onto the same server, and, and you know, even though that server is kind of, I, I don't think it's dead, it's on life support. <laughs> um, it kind of helped me find other people, and I think that's fair, because, you know, anything that was set up during, during the pandemic, it, it's kind of hard to be sustainable, because it was set up mostly by people who now had to, you know, get back to day jobs and stuff like that. I know I do much better now. German is much better than that. Well, oh my gosh. You've been you've been like living living in Germany, right? So that makes sense. Good morning, Penguin Queen. How are you? Yeah, I imagine being immersed in it is is the way. I think I would... I was saying... I don't think it was last stream, a couple of streams ago. I get really nervous when I'm attempting other languages. <laughs> because I just... I'm very self-conscious about how my accent is and and mispronouncing things and i think just because i'm so self-conscious about it i think that um that just makes it worse <laughs> i am good today is another portrait morning and we are drawing the twins Hio and sue who are bodyguards in one of my play by post campaigns So I thought I would... This may be one of the only times that we have a token or portrait facing the other way. <laughs> we always have it this way. But I would like... I would like them to be kind of facing each other and have a slight change of expression. Because there's the the very subtle difference in their personality, which 
I don't think anyone's going to get to the point where they can tell them apart because they're not important enough characters. The, the, the players would have to really drag them on screen, if you know what I mean. Like, like sometimes there's an NPC you didn't envision being important and then the players are like, we've adopted them now. <laughs> so unless that happens, probably not, but Hio is the boisterous one and, and Sue is the quieter one. They both love a good prank, but Sue has a limit. <laughs> And Hio doesn't. That's the main difference. There's a baby ladybug on your... Oh my gosh. That sounds cute. Good luck. Good luck. It'll hopefully be a lucky day. There we go. Here we are. Let's give him a little happy mouth. I said before you came on, Penguin Queen, it's a hundred percent just I started with the twins from Orin. <laughs> and um I'm working my way working my way away from them, but they they're pretty they're pretty they're pretty much the twins from Orin. <laughs> The hair is red as an homage. Uh, I, I, I've I definitely stolen the whole... We change each other's uniform to see who can tell us apart thing. <laughs> Currently, the only person who can tell them apart is the boss, the prince, the person that they work for. And I don't see that changing. I feel like one of the players is making an attempt, but I don't think he spends enough time with them. Almost he Heo. But yes, welcome in, Jupiter Spire. It is. It's. <laughs> Okay, Penguin Queen, that one was an accident. <laughs> that one was an accident. It just so happens that he's a prince. Although it was an amazing accident that you've only just brought to my attention. I haven't realized just that I've basically, that's how on point that is. <laughs> he just so happened to be a prince. Who just so happens to no um investigation magic so of course he's going to be able to tell two mischievous twins apart there's no way he couldn't <laughs> good morning jupiter spire how are you doing let's go with pink Yeah, I think out of all the listed characters for this play-by-post game, these are the only two that I haven't given a new shiny portrait to. Good morning, Exile. How are you doing? Not too bad, how are we all doing? I'm doing good. I'm waking up. I'm having a good a good morning. Gonna add add some mischievous twins to my repertoire of portraits. We'll just put this one here. And because they always change because I always do the the twin thing from Orin and change uniform, I can't say f like this one's Hugh, this one's Sue, uh, because because that's not always the case. 
I do have which one's red, which one's blue in my mind, typically. And then before they enter a scene, I decide, are they cosplaying as each other today? <laughs> I've got to decide it. I've got to decide it before before the, the scene unfolds. Otherwise it feels like I'm... it feels unfair. They've got some very classic anime fringe going on, which I really like. I haven't done this sort... this is like a Shaman King Yu-Gi-Oh vibe. Which I don't do a huge amount of these days. But I... How, there's a special place in my heart for this kind of like extra anime looking bangs because it's what I just started drawing with gotta figure out um, what kind of cable I need to extend um, my wireless receiver from bedroom to living room where the headset and base stations are ah, oh okay well good luck Good luck with that. But yeah, you have like a, a new computer setup, Exile? Which seems to cool. Do I want to give this a bit of a... yeah. I want to give this a bit of a, a curve. We'll give it a bit more space though. This one, I'm gonna want to just bring down a bit, and then we'll need to fix that. Just moved it from the sort of studio office back to your bedroom. Cool, cool, cool. That seems like, I mean, it seems like a good space. Okay, I'm gonna just reflect this and then I might rejiggle it but actually I don't think I need to I think that looks pretty good <gasps> yay cool and then I need to figure out how the hairline goes I'm gonna go like this as a base let's go widow's peak Feeling Widow's Peak. If you're drawing those on the wrong layer, you get down. You get down here. I know it was probably deliberate, but you flatten in the top point of the hair at the point immediately popping back up caught you off guard because it was like the hair was like no I will not behave <laughs> I think it was me pressing undo they their hair is pretty well tamed looking at how I've drawn them before they've got this they've they managed to get it into a top knot which is pretty impressive okay then how was that that'll work I think. So I'm going to take the circle and I'm going to break it 
So we just have the hair. So I can give them a hairline. There we go. Mostly doing the good old ADHD, rearrange furniture and house to make myself feel better. That is very fair. Even as a um, neurotypical person, it feels good to move the house around like every once in a while. 100% agree. I just realized I haven't saved, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, they definitely... They definitely have, have tameable hair. There are some characters I feel like I draw where I'm like, your hair is a disaster. <laughs> One of my oldest characters who I've never really... I don't talk about it a lot because he's not in a tabletop RPG character. He's like in a in a personal project that I'm working on. There's always this joke that I've I've kept alive, even though I don't, even though it's just such a silly joke that his hair is just completely untamable. Because <laughs> I would draw it so spiky back in the day. So even though there's like part of me wants to like smooth out his hair a little bit because I've I want to change the style up I'm like I must not I must resist for the joke. <laughs> also made pretzels. Ooh, like like big pretzels. Like doughy pretzels. Pretzels are good. In uni, I had a roommate who would make pretzels sometimes. It was really, really nice. I should have, I should have learned. I should have, I should have had to teach me. <laughs> Alas, I did not. And I'm going to pop this. There we go. We've got this top knot. I am just going to pop here. There we go. Oh, he looks so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's come together pretty quickly okay I'm gonna just again I'm gonna grab this I'm gonna move this up here and I'm going to duplicate this artboard I shouldn't have anything locked oh I do there's no face <laughs> He has no face. There we go. Let's unlock it and try again. Duplicate. There we go. Now we have twins. We've got the egg wash, so the pale and fluffy bits. So, oh yeah, that, that, that's kind of like a like a little extra, I find. And then we're gonna immediately reflect this one. Okay. Now we did a reflect, so the first thing I need to do before I forget is move the eye mark because they are not a mirror image of each other. <laughs> they both have a little mole underneath the... which would be their left eye. And then we'll change the expression. So... I'm going to just redraw those. So there we go. This is this is the this is the karma twin. This is Sue. <laughs> I've decided. Though, you know, it won't always be. If they're being the, if they're being themselves, this is Sue. 
I think is the best way of putting it. Look at his little face. So precious. I need to put cheeks on both of them. I forgot the cheeks. Yeah, there we go. And I can do the shade on them differently just because then it's like they're together in the same place. I don't know. That was my idea. Since I'm here, I might put some shiny things in their eyes. The what to do, I can do a sword maybe, because that's their thing. Let's, let's put like a sword in there. Little mini each other's. <laughs> that sounds like some sort of like inception, like there's a face inside the eye and then that eye has a face inside of it. <laughs> it looks cute, but then it gets very Jinji Ito-esque. <laughs> It's the faces all the way down. <laughs> Adorable, but also terrifying. Ah, uh, that's kind of you know, if if I've, if anything is my brand though, surely it's that. gonna give them little hexagons i like it having the main white highlight in the eye like angular recently i've been going with, with with a lot of triangles but something about it terrifyingly adorable or adorably terrifying it depends i feel like the the, the blood hag was Ador was I think oh gosh which one did I say <laughs> terrifyingly adorable but I feel like faces all the way down is adorably terrifying <laughs> there's a distinction I feel like there's definitely a difference uh, let's put a gradient on here oh wait I haven't it's not in the group you get in the group there we go. Thank you very much. And there we go. Gotta have that gradient. Yeah, this is this is looking good. This is looking looking good. Okay. And I think I just want a sword. Nothing too fancy. I'm gonna just start with the line and I'm going to outline this. Could I have drawn a rectangle? Absolutely. But that was, for some reason, not what I decided to do. So we're just doing it this way. But 
feel like my brain just hasn't quite woken up yet. wasn't what I wanted. There we go. And then we'll merge that. Here we go. Which way up do I want this sword? Let's go let's go straight up for this first one and we'll just move it around a bit. <laughs> the blade is in the eye of the beholder. Oh no! Not the beholder! <laughs> Which eye of the beholder? I mean, that seems like a place to hide a really cool magic sword. In in one of the beholder's eyes. <laughs> it's like its only blind spot, one of its eyes has been stabbed, so it has a single blind spot. Across. Maybe. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Scribbles notes for next boss fight. <laughs> you are welcome to the idea. I don't run D&D &D enough to be precious about any sort of D&D &D ideas. Yeah. Look at his little face. So cute. So mischievous. <laughs> the sword's name is Beauty and just lets you use your charisma to attack. Oh, that's a thing that I would love. <laughs> A sword that lets you attack with your charisma? That's... I feel like 90% of my characters would benefit from that. <laughs> I feel like... If I look at my character sheets, I'm either going to find a... On the level 1 version of them, I'm either going to find a big old 16 under charisma or an 8. <laughs> it's very rarely just meh. Like, instead of an anti-magic cone, it's an attack cone. Because the sword is messing with their vision. Ah, there you go. We're reinventing beholders this morning. Okay, now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to just paste. I don't know why I grabbed the cheeks as well. I'm going to reflect that gonna pop them in roughly we don't need these and then I'll need them up so oh, I, why did I reflect them <laughs> I'm like hmm, now that I think about it I didn't need to reflect them at all okay back you go back you go there we are that was just silly There we are. We don't want it to look like we, we've we just mirrored things. <laughs> I, could, I could, I mean, I've mirrored up to this point, but I want them to have a little bit of a, 
a difference for their personality. Oh, anti-attack. Instead of an anti-attack code, okay. I get- I think I get it. Instead of anti-magic, it's anti-attack. I think. <laughs> like doing low charisma characters. Oh, I like doing low charisma characters as either having social anxiety or not understanding the unspoken rules of interaction. Yeah, I think... I like the idea of it being like a the social anxiety. That's always helped... That's always kind of helped us um, for characters. But well, for players who have uh, who have actual social anxiety, it's actually always been really helpful because you can just stat a low charisma character and it's like... It just reflects the anxiety. <laughs> and it's 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 helped people I know kind of get into their characters a bit more. So that makes perfect sense. Then there's the Ashton route, where Talison role plays Locris make Yeah, I mean there is just making them mean as well. Which I feel like, I feel like I, I I did that a little bit with with Valerian. Valerian's a low charisma character, and it's not that she's it's not that she's mean. It's that she doesn't have tact. Was how I was trying to RP it. I'm going to have a quick swig of tea. Nom, 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 nom. You're going to have to stop typing that word, Exile. <laughs> Automod doesn't like it. I say mean because I don't like to... I don't... I like to keep this, this stream a swear-free space for the most part. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> You're right. There is a very different there is a difference between being mean and being a butthole. <laughs> the auto mod did also catch that as well. I guess I guess that one makes sense though. <laughs> I don't particularly want people just coming into chat and calling me a butthole. <laughs> Auto mod. Auto mod is 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 just on on point today. <laughs> nope. None of these things. None of these things. Although that one was different. <laughs> Everything else has been um, has been held back because of bullying. The reason for the last one because it's a, it's a sex based term. <laughs> Just to you know, let everybody else wonder forever. <laughs> That's yeah, I I agree. It is just anatomy. <laughs> Black Ring Society! <laughs> that is very fair.
Okay. Why? This happened again. This happened before. It doesn't like you typing Japanese dinosaur. <laughs> We can't- we can't talk about Japanese dinosaur anime. The mods. Auto mod will not allow it. I want, don't want to say the mods because I have one mod. I don't want- I don't want the whale to be upset. The whale is not stopping us from talking about Japanese dinosaurs. Just auto mod. Auto mod is... It's doing its thing today. But it keeps me safe, so I'm happy it's here. Okay. It's almost 8 o'clock, so before I go ham on the shading, I'm going to go on a little bit of a break. I'm just going to pop the bits in the ear, because regardless of where they're facing, we're going to have that. Yeah, I will. Go break, get to drink. I am almost out of tea. <gasps> you have cast the hydrate spell, now I have to go. <laughs> Okie dokie, I'm having a bit of a stretch. If you need a stretch or if you need a break or a drink or anything else to function as a person, now is the time to go do that. I'm gonna be gone for roughly 10 minutes. Have a good day at work, Penguin Queen. Have a good rest of your day, and I will see everybody else in about 10 minutes.
Nom, 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 nom. Hello! I am back. I have had a hydrate. Thank you very much. I have water and I have a new cup of tea. Nom, 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 nom. Thank you, thank you. I hope everybody else had a good break. I am going to continue with the twins. Second print of the Dragon Jaw Dice Fair. Oh no! What kind of 3D printer are you using? Is it um, resin? Or is it plastic? Resin. Ah, oh, okay. Ugh. I hope it's okay when it fails because sometimes it can be messy. Okay. I'm going to come in. I'm going to pop some shade on. And I'm going to start with the eye. I just find a little bit of shade across the eye makes it pop. Just fill in that top half. And I'm going to just bring the opacity down. So it's just a little bit. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Lost layer cohesion. On the right side of the jaw. Resin print fails are simple to clean up. Oh, okay, cool. Toss the failed print and run a tank clean cycle. Nice. Yeah, I like the idea of getting a 3D printer, but I probably would go for plastic over resin, but that's purely because of my own um, I, like lack of confidence in dealing with the chemicals I would say because I know that the resins are usually prettier okay and then we need some Shade to go across here. So it would help if I was actually in the group. So let's let's make sure I'm there. There we go. And we'll pop that behind the eyes. There we go. Basically, it cures a thin layer across the entire underside of the tank. Oh, okay. Then peel that off. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I've done like a tiny bit of resin stuff where I've attempted to make uh, dice in silicon mo molds in the past. But it's one of those things of like, yeah, kind of wish I knew a bit more about it. But also I just don't, now I'm in a space where I just have absolutely no ventilation. <laughs> be really cool to get a 3D printer at some point though, if I find a bigger space. Mm -hmm. 
since resin printing uses UV resin, you basically pour, print, and forget. Keep one next to the window. That's all you got to worry about. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, I think it would definitely be a window thing. But even just even just thinking, I don't have a win. For instance, I don't have a window. <laughs> like, I do have a window, but it's, um... I'm in, like, an attic office. So... Definitely doesn't seem like the best place to be putting a 3D printer. <laughs> one day, one day, I'll have a window. <laughs> and all my dreams can come true. Okay, I just need to continue that line a little bit, so... I'm gonna just make a little segment that hang over the shade so I don't have to worry about it. But yeah, I know like overall they're not the they're not hugely high maintenance is honestly my um my preference. I gotta I gotta know about things or I like or I worry that I'm doing things wrong. Do I want this entire ear in shade? I feel like I do. I feel like I'm going pretty heavy on the shade. If I'm doing that, I mean, I can just... I can just do like that. I can just make the entire ear pink. Or purple. I might go slightly lighter as well. And then I can just duplicate the face. just need to what this just bit needs to be in shade so if I make a line I can cut that up and then I can just color that bit I might have to rejiggle the lines again as well but oh no What's happened with this, this line? What's this? What's this? What's happening? Why are we doing this? Ah, it's this, isn't it? There it is, okay. I'm gonna just do that. Do you have the same thing going on? No. That's fine then. Okay. And then I'm going to come over to the top knot and we're going to add a little bit of shade as well. This one I might use a multiply. Maybe we'll, maybe instead of multiply, we'll make the opacity down. Yeah. I want it to still have that purple color, but I want it to blend a little bit more. Because the purple on the skin isn't too much of a, mis a mismatch for me. Come in, just give it a bit of a different shape. Yeah. 
Okay, maybe a bit more on the opacity. Maybe. Yeah, that's better. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do a similar thing with the shade that we did on the face. How much was the opacity on the hair? I think I did 80. Seventy. Ah, uh, okay. Let's make it eighty. Yeah. Oh, I meant to I meant to flail instead of laugh. <laughs> nice. Okay. One twin. Shaded. Second twin. We need to get this going. So we'll do the same kind of style, but we want it on this side. I'm still gonna pop the little bit in the in the top knot though, just because I feel like that like the ear will exist. So I might just do that first. Maintenance for the resin printer is simple, but replacing FEP film is a rare occurrence. And besides, you just got to worry about bad leveling. Oh, bed leveling. Yes. It's the first printer you got. Next one is either going to be an Ender 5 Plus or a CR30. I know very little about the models to know much about that, but that sounds cool. Like, I know I know li little bits and pieces. I know, like, the terminology, I think, is the best way of putting it, actually. Because I have some friends who use the 3D printing. It's very cool. Like an absolute game changer for minis. There we go. Just because that's where the hair is folding, and I want to really hammer that home. Okay, so what I might do. I might just think of where I want the shade on this side of the face first. I think I want it like this. And then I'll just need to extend that out. And I can use that to kind of just cut into the face shape. Duplicate. I'm gonna merge. Then I'm also gonna just make a copy with a line. So that I've got the line to go on top. And then I can cut this shape into two. And then I've got my fill. For the shade over there. Yay! Both are good for printing big stuff. Oh my gosh, how big are we talking? Current resin printer is good for high detail small stuff like minis. Yeah, like how big? Because I, I always think of printing minis. When you say big stuff, what kind of big stuff are we talking? Can print a helmet in a single piece. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is big. I didn't think I didn't realize that we had machines that could like domestic machines that could do that.
That's pretty cool. Okay, item. Gotta get that shade on the eyes. the one that I used. Just want to make sure that it's the same purple. Oh, I'm not sure it is actually. I think it was the slightly darker one. Yeah, it was a darker one. Okay. Coming in again. Oh, I press save. That's why I got thrown out of my group. That was very silly. I'll give you that one, Illustrator. That one was me. And then fill. Oh, my boys, they're looking so cute. It's gonna feel like how I'm gonna do the hair. A CR30 can print a sword as long as Sephiroth's. Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> that just beggars the question. How big is the machine? How does that work? I have questions. It's an infinite Z-axis. Oh my, that's a bad, oh, I get it. That's very cool. <laughs> the idea that we can just print a Sephiroth sword is kind of mind-blowing. Prints on a conveyor belt and can just keep going. I get it. I get it. That's that's clever. Yeah, as long as you keep giving it material and I guess supporting, you know, supporting it once it's off of the conveyor belt. <laughs> yeah, your only limitation is actual physical space. You can print things for that. <laughs> this is clearly a way of thinking I haven't quite wrapped my, my brain around. Just the idea that you just print for the sake of them printing more things. Print out rollers and extend stuff for the support. Oh, gosh. It's too powerful. <laughs> it's too powerful. Okay, I want to put some hair highlights on here. Because I want to... I'm going to keep the shade off of the front bangs just because it's going to be seen mostly small, so I don't think there's any need to go into that much detail. But I do want to put some highlights on. Start with Sue. And I'll figure out how I want the color overlays to work. So I'm gonna start off with this light purple. Though I did use purple for the shade so maybe I don't want to use purple for the highlight. Maybe pink. I mean pink's not that far off but they've got a very red vibe going on. Had friends who printed parts for their next printer. There you go. Self-replacing machines. My brain... <laughs> it's incredibly smart. And just... It's just a bit mind-blowing. Just a tad mind-blowing.
Yeah, I like that. And then maybe just some little white, little white bits as well. Just catching the light, just a little bit of the light. And I've started giving people lips. Nothing too detailed. Just like this. I've been enjoying it. Now, Sue and Hio aren't particularly glamorous, so I might leave them off. Yeah, it's for the extra pretty characters. <laughs> okay. Here, you need some light in your life. Let's do it. Start with the pink again. I know there were tentative plans at one point to send a 3D printing robot to Mars that would gather Martian soil and ice to make a clay and build houses there. Oh my gosh. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. That That's pretty cool. Let's reflect this. I don't want that as a line. This is going to be slightly different to the other one. Because we've got this entire edge. Just want some white, I think. Nice. And I might come in one last thing. It's I might just give the mouth a bit of a shade as well, so it's got a little bit of depth. So I'm just gonna cut that shape up. line and just turn that on multiply yeah just need to think of the background now also while cleaning your desk you found a certain volume you may recognize dungeon what did you find? A certain volume. Is it a volume one? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Thank you. I am currently working on volume two as well. I've been working on it for a while. I'm hoping to do I'm hoping to finish it this year though. Last year was a pretty busy one.
I don't want to promise an actual time since I've been unable to do it so far. <laughs> but I really do want to get it done this year. Okay, for the back. I'm going to open up another token and use that as a base, so... I'm going to open up Maru. Sweet Maru. Who had a very basic token, I admit. There's no shade or anything. <laughs> I'm going to use this as a base. I've got like a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a theme going. So this has been purely... This has been the background I've used for mortal characters. Or heroic mortals. Someone who isn't... Um, and exalted, basically. <laughs> but we'll give it a different colour. Maru! <laughs> we do stand Maru. Okay. I'm gonna just group these things together. Gosh, there's so many of these things that are... There we go. I don't need... And then we're going to come in and we're going to stop these lines from overlapping by making a clipping mask for them. Since these ones are very close. So let me just do that quickly. Okay. Need to grab both the twins. And we're going to rotate them. So that they're on an angle. And I'll give them a little scale. A little squish. Seem to fit quite nicely. So I'm wondering if I do want to keep you on the same tilt or if I want to flip. Hmm. I think I'll keep it on the same. This, I think, is the first one that I have facing the other way. <laughs> Unprecedented. In fact, now I'm gonna... Now that I have room... Let's extend that out so we can see the both of them. It's a set, exactly. Let's see what it looks like on the other angle. So let me rotate. That's where it would be. Hmm. What do people think? The up angle or the down angle for the second one? I think maybe up. I like the angle up for the mirror. Yeah, okay, we'll keep that. We'll keep that. And I'm going to hit save. Symmetry also makes my brain happy. I do enjoy symmetry. Now, what colour do I want for the twin? So, Maru has blue because he's a sailor. He's from the West. And another character, Lakshmi, has the same pattern. And hers is red because she's she's from the South, which is like a very hot and, and fiery place. Maybe I'll go with yellow. I don't think I've really done a lot of yellow. And yellow is usually the colour I attribute to the realm. Hey, so you think about commissioning a token... If you do, I'll do it on stream. <laughs> I do most of well, I yeah, I like to do the commissions on stream when people are okay with it. It's in it's in all of my Kofi co terms. But, you know, if you if you don't want it on stream, specify and I I'll, I'll keep it I'll keep it secret and safe. So does Realm Boys have brown I I go with yellow. I don't like to use brown very often. I think I've said this before. It's just not a color that's I like. I like. It's just not a color I like. <laughs> I 
so you know outside of obviously like skin tones and stuff because i want natural skin tones and and it's kind of why a lot of my characters don't have brown hair but this is the closest to brown i've come in a very long time but i do occasionally try and throw it in there because i'm like it is a pretty common hair color <laughs> And I have nothing against brown hair, it's just because I really like bright, vibrant colours. And yeah, I think it's just, just dark colours in general. I always default to purple instead of brown. Um, just because it's the cartoon style I like, like even if I'm hinting at somebody having black hair, I like it to be dark blue. It's the same with brown, I tend to go with purple. It's, um, I don't know why my brain has done that, but it's, um, almost like the, it's almost like a, a variant. Because I still feel like even if I have a character with purple hair, if you colour it in a certain way, it, it will still read as like a brown hair sort of thing. Ah, uh, this was well before JoJo's. This is a habit I can't blame on JoJo's. Which is in itself quite a rarity. Let's go with yellow. Because in terms of the colours I like to use for the for the map for this campaign, blue is blue is for the west, green is for the east, red is for the south, and then the north. The north is like a light blue. <laughs> I've like doubled up. The west is like a dark dark or oh, it's like a deep sea blue. Whereas the north is like a light blue, like a sky blue. And then the middle is yellow. I don't think those are any official colours, that's just how my brain does it. <laughs> okay. And then I just need to figure these circles out. So I could just go with the same colour as the stripes, which kind of works. They can keep the blue waves as long as they're part of the, the water dragging. They could. It doesn't look too bad. It does pop a bit. I'm going to just cycle through a few colours. We've got the purple got green. I quite like the green. And then we've got the teal and the blues. I don't, I don't want to go dark, I don't think. Yeah, none of those. Orange is too similar. I'm tempted to just go yellow. I'm kind of tempted to just do that. What do people think? Was there a particular colour that people were into? Just because I didn't put any blue on Lakshmi and she is also a part of the the dragon gang. I love her. I gosh, I love I love this portrait. <laughs> She's so cute. And I like had a bit of a detail in the in the flames for this one. I wanted it to look less like water. She's got a bit of a a flatter look as well. I went through some of them a bit quicker. I just needed to get them all done. Yeah. Citrus fight. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with yellow because it's quite rare that I do. <laughs> what was it? Yellow yellow tends to be my least favourite colour. Um in terms of bright colours. But I'm feeling it for them. I think it looks nice. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go with this. I think that's the twins done. Gotten the same sentiment from your roommate. Ah, oh, interesting. I don't know what it is because I always find myself drawn to things regardless. Because, like, you know, just very stupid, simple things. Like I was team instinct when Pokemon Go was big, I'm still, I still still kind of turn it on every now and then. Um, 
That was less because it was yellow, though. That was because I picked Team Instinct because the leader was a dweeb. <laughs> Had to run away to do work, came back to find the twins finished. Welcome back. Yes. They were Team Meme. They were Team... Oh, look, I picked... I... I didn't know that when I picked them. <laughs> of course, I picked Team Meme, but I didn't know that. I never know that. I just gravitate towards the thing that always memes. It's just what I do. Pick Team Instinct because the whole vibe was let poke. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The leader was always drawn as clumsy in the artwork, which I can relate to. The other two were just too competent. You had the smart one and the strong one. And then it was almost like the leader of instinct was the other one. <laughs> so I had I had no choice. Also they that also they were based on the three legendary birds. And I have to say, Zaptos is my favourite. Um for a really odd sentimental reason. When I was a when I was a a tiny child and I collect Pokemon cards I had I had a very a very sad incident of some of my cards being stolen and one of the only cards that weren't taken from me was Zapdos so I had like this weird childhood at least Zapdos hasn't left me <laughs> mentality so there was also that there was also that I had to pick it it's one. It's my favorite because it didn't leave me. <laughs> because you know the cards were sentient and they they chose to be stolen. <laughs> but yeah, I picked the blue one because it was the only color. You're yeah. See, a lot of people went in for um for the blue team because blue. I mean, blue is my favorite color. I totally understand that reasoning. I have memories of Zapdos from Mystery Dungeon. Ah, cool. Yeah. Zapdos is just my favourite out of the three. So that was also a very big contributing factor. And then I stayed in the team because it was the meme team. <laughs> okay. I would also pet the lightning bulb. I would risk it. I would risk those pets. It just looks so silly as well. Like, the other two, I do like the look of all three. The other two are just more elegant, though. Zapdos is just like a fried chicken. <laughs> and there's something about that that I'm just... I'm just drawn to. <laughs> I do, I just... I always have to pick the silly option, if there is one. But yeah, I'm happy with, these, with, with the twins. The next stream is going to be on Sunday. Sunday the 5th at 10am GMT time. And uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm... I think I'll be carrying on the Mimic zine. I think that's what we'll be doing next stream. We'll have to have a see, unless I come up with something else. <laughs> But until such times, who is around to raid? Oh, Roll is streaming. Let's go give Roll a raid. Let's go say hi to Roll. They're doing art right now. We can go see what's happening over there. Roll Marianne. Aha! Okay, the raid has been set. If you are a subscriber, or if you have unlocked the raid emote, you can use this raid message that is incoming. Or, if not, there is always a love heart option here. Oop, almost. There it is. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a good rest of your day or a good sleep wherever you are and um, a good rest of your week, too. I will be back on the weekend for some more art. You sleep. Have a good sleep, Exile. 
yeah, and I will see everybody soon. Stick around for the raid. Bye!